Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks Plays KSP. This is episode 15 of our interplanetary voyage. And let's get right into the meat of things. This is actually probably the episode some of you have been waiting for. It's definitely the episode I have been waiting for because today we will be utilizing the science that we have learned from our eccentric quarks that we have sent back to Kerbin and we will be designing our very first warp ship using the Umbra Space Industries 0.625 Alcubia drive and for the common propulsion we will be using I guess the Vasimir engine so just looking for the right components I need an SAS unit somewhere please close to the center of mass would be preferable although not necessary and I need where is my Vasimir engine Vasimir plasma thruster there you are okay great it says 4000 delta V well I guess in a warp ship it's kind of hard to define the delta V because you're not really moving you are technically bending the space in front of you so contracting the space in front of you and expanding the space behind you so you're technically not thrusting so it's hard to define delta V I guess okay and since we do require some hefty amount of power I will be placing the nuclear reactor and I want to place in the turbo power fission reactor okay now uh, with that being said I'm just trying to see the power requirements and when it comes to actually running the engine it doesn't seem to have a high power requirement but when generating exotic matter it requires a very high power requirement so requires a power requirement okay yeah sure okay so let's show the warp bubble and um, if I read the documentation correctly the Alcubia drive is generating the warp bubble around it and everything that is out of the warp bubble at the point when drive is running should ultimately be destroyed because it will be outside of the warp field it will be torn by space contraction and expanding so yeah I guess okay radiators and we want to be putting the small thermal control system okay I think that's pretty good enough and we want it to be a probe not a manned ship because this is completely new technology this is unresearched we are dwelling into the unknown so we have no idea what to expect okay let us find the antenna I want to be using the communion 8888 because this test ship will be going either to Duna or to Eve I haven't decided yet I mean I'm just curious to make a small test run see how far do we get with it so not really you know any longer stretches of travel I guess okay do we need anything else I was thinking another antenna but then again no we don't need it this one is also interesting OPT ultra high frequency antenna yeah sure whatever okay now we have to th figure out a way to get that ship into the orbit uh, that being said if I read also the Alcubier drive um, also beside of these two uh, the fission reactor I'm adding a total of four panels four solar panels because 
those will be used to actually refuel the ship where necessary. Or provide some extra power, uh, what do you know? I mean, I'm not that familiar with the technology, so I'm just guessing. It will be, I think, a very Kerbal launch. Okay, just mapping everything to the action groups because I have a feeling I will need them for some reason. I think this looks rather well, so I don't think I should be doing anything more with it. The action groups are set up. So the next thing that we need to do is to construct a booster for the damn thing. So yes. And I'm thinking some sort of a fairing should do nicely. So let's see. 1.25 while it looks as if it would go, the Alcubia drive part would not. So let's take the 1.25 expanded. And that one seems to be working like a charm, which I guess is a good thing. So let's place, place the cross section and there we go, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a long while since I've actually used 1.25 meter fairing or even in its expanded form, I can tell you that much. Okay, so let's see, I want to be putting the fuel tank underneath, also 1.25. Although I have to make sure that it has enough, uh, enough fuel and enough kick to actually get us where we need to go. And the goal for this uh, launcher is to get the Alcubia drive into the orbit. Basically the Alcubia drive probe into the orbit and then we have Vasimir engines to get us wherever we need to go or to come back. So yeah. Should I use this engine? I really don't like it that much. Yeah, let's take uh, the regular swivel. 1.38 well I guess that's enough with its top 2000 delta V but we need to have some so, some sort of boosters so let's take the decoupler strap two decouplers on one of each side and then we will be attaching the boosters so let's see if we can find some decent boosters globe SRBs yeah, those are pretty basic, and um, yeah, I don't like the Delta V when I add those, actually. Those are not my numbers, sorry. I think you should find some more boosters. Let's try again. Okay, another radial decoupler. This time I will put the rockets much closer because it makes more sense. And let's see how it goes with these. 3.11 hmm well I'm not overly impressed but this could maybe work maybe if I take a bigger tank and then just strap it like here put the swivel on the bottom and that puts the 3400 Delta V well yeah I guess it could work Okay, the next thing that I need is actually fins, stabilizing fins. Because the first section of the flight will be using the SRBs and those have zero steering. So yes, we need to have some steering to be able to steer our rocket. Okay, something on these, along these lines will do nicely. And then we need to actually check our staging, that everything is correctly placed. Our center of mass is only slightly behind our center of lift. That means that we, given the swivel engines, we should have enough 
control authority and let me just put action groups number one and make sure that everything is correct great okay so I think it's time for a test I'm really interested to see how the test will look like oh I forgot one important thing I believe it's called launch clamps because otherwise our rocket could tip over and fall down which is not something that we want to happen Okay, let's take it a little bit down, put it on the actual launch pad rather than just put it high up in the air, I mean. Okay, let's simulate. Okay, and let's see, we don't need to rendezvous with anything, so we just kick the boosters, and wow, 3.2, it really shoots up like a rocket, literally. I am slightly worried for the payload, because this one has a very high thrust to weight, so kicking the boosters, and oof, this was close. <laughs> But then I guess, uh, I mean, our rocket is running straight and true. We just need to, to tilt it ever so slightly just to maintain, you know, a good connection. Well, technically not connection, but good appro ascent angle. Yeah, that was the word I was looking for. Ascent angle. Okay, our apoapsis is already in the 50s. which means we could start pitching our nose down a little bit more. Real plume really looks beautiful on this one. And our apoapsis is around 75 already, so we are, or we will go above the atmosphere. beautiful sight and the moment we get somewhere around 100 and something ish I will cut off the engine I still don't want it to be at 100 because it would be too much uh, too many ships so okay perfect decoupling the fairing let's expand the radiator stuff And once we get actually on the apoapsis, then we will do the circularization. It is very important that I decouple the fairings and enable the communitron because that one we are pretty much dependent on for, well, basically controlling the vessel. So, yeah. With probes, the good thing is that communication is not an afterthought, but a thought that is vital to the process, otherwise you have a dead stick of a probe. Okay, extending the uh, medium range communication dish. Let us do the circularization. 1800 meters per second to burn and we have 700 delta V in our engine, so we will for sure be, I guess, circularizing on the Vasimir engine. Okay, and let's ditch the booster, making sure that I crank up the power level, and in that case, we will have enough thrust so that we could actually, you know, circularize. Otherwise, I don't want my engine to be too weak when we are circularizing because I'm risking re-entering the atmosphere and burning up and all other stuff of cool things. So, yeah. Okay. 
just burning 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 a thrust weight is 0 0.39 i guess which i guess is fantastic given that we are using plasma propulsion i guess 300 meters per second extending the solar panels in case we encounter some sunshine we do want to refill our battery because it's being consumed because uh, plasma thruster is power hungry definitely very power hungry okay so I'm trying to examine everything on our craft so far it looks pretty promising and the goal is to get it one uh, more than one radius away which is 600 kilometers so I want to make sure that this 600 kilometers we go a little bit higher than that because Alcubier drive will work only when we are a little bit towards the edge of the gravity well of the Kerbin so yeah burning for the epilepsis passing roughly 450 500 meters per second to go and we have 1417 in the tank and this is by using this power setting I can always reset the power setting to much less and then it will be more fun I guess Okay, not that much to burn, 517 meters per second until we are fully circularized and orbital. Okay, 470 meters per second to burn. Okay, well, I think we have proven that this probe works. I mean, we cannot, <laughs> I'm sorry if you are disappointed, we cannot run, run an Alcubier drive engine test because it's a theoretical engine and we have no idea what to expect. So our computers don't know what to simulate, simply put. So we have to build it, run it the first time, collect the data on how it works and then we will be considering it. By the way guys, um, I'm selecting the components of a Kerbin refuel station that I've been building in my Kerbal engineering series because if you remember our solar carborundrum uh, collector has been deployed or more or less around the Sun and I wanted collecting carborundrum and then dropping it off at the Kerbin orbital um, refueling dock which is something that we are building at the moment if you're interested to see how is this monstrosity being built I recommend you check my Kerbal engineering series on for example you can just click on the card that I'm showing you at the moment okay loading another so I mean you have seen me designed all these ships in the in that uh, series so if you want more detail on how are they constructed I recommend you to check that one okay moving swiftly onwards the next thing to happen is our carborundrum tanker and that one will be happening in 12 days and currently we are building two things one is the warp probe or Alcubier drive probe and the Kerbin refueling station mark top okay so running Kerbal construction time we because it does take time to actually construct things Okay, and our ships are not still built, but our carborundrum tanker 
with booster is already asking for us our intervention because it has come to its periapsis and it wants to circularize at the optimal height to be able to collect carborundum the whole time as it goes around the sun. I mean, I've just parked it into the 5300 or 200 circular orbit. I don't know if that's correct. I hope it is, but who knows. I certainly hope uh, that you have grabbed some good books because this will be a long dry or once again long circularization. So let's just input the variables. Burn 99.31% in 11 minutes. Yeah, signal delay can be a mood killer. Okay, our ship is pointed at least in the right direction. So assuming we light the fuse at the back, we can hope that we will be shot out in the correct uh, direction at least. Kicking the gas on our magnetoplasmodynamic engines, two of them. Beautiful shot. And I'm somewhat accelerating it because, let's face it, nobody wants to see out of the 25-ish minute episode that five of the minutes is just burn, 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 burn. And hello, once again, yep, yeah, burn. What else did you have for breakfast? Burn, etc. So yeah, sorry. Okay, 5,231, I am burning and I'm trying to circularize it, so yeah. Okay, opening the collector, wow, that thing is huge. So let's open the carborundum collector and I want to make sure that this sucker is actually collecting carborundrum, otherwise I have brought it here for nothing. So let's see. Carborundrum. Okay, come on, make my day and move the resource amount unit just a smidge. What do you say? Okay, might as well actually be extending the solar panels because they look cool and we need some juice. We have queued a lot of commands, but I assure you all of those are just to extend the solar panels, so nothing really major going on. Hmm. Okay, let us extend the solar panels just for security reasons. I mean, we are getting enough power from our nuclear three nuclear reactors, but at the point when we will be detaching from the main craft, I do want to have my own power generation. Okay. So, Carborundrum Scanner. Your burn will be complete in 1200 meters per second. Okay, still searching for carborundrum. And while we are burning, we are also collecting carborundrum because if you can see, we are at the correct altitude, which is amazing. Okay, guys. Uh, once again, we are coming up on the end of this episode. I like if you like the episode. I really hope that you like the episode. Uh, by the way, designing the warp ship, it's such a small thing. So I didn't want to separate it to the Kerbal Engineering. 
if we will be building something bigger than it then for sure I will be posting it but this was I think sufficient enough for the test exactly so let's just see if we are still oh and we are coming up on our termination of our burn and great the flight computer has turned off the or kick the gas back to zero. Okay guys, once again, as I said, like if you like, hit subscribe for more KSP content that should be coming soon. And I guess until the next episode, thank you all once again for watching. This is Chromeworks signing off.